Good afternoon and welcome to all of our guests and visitors. Mass today is offered for Mary Headley. Our celebrant is Father Mark. Please rise and join me in praying the entrance antiphon. Behold, the Lord will come, descending with splendor to visit his people with peace, and he will bestow on them eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and the splendor of the Father of Christ. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Stir up your power, we pray, O Lord, and come that with you to protect us, we may find rescue from the pressing dangers of our sins. And with you to set us free, we may be found worthy of salvation. Who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, But a very little while, and Lebanon shall be changed into an orchard, and the orchard be regarded as a forest. On that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant will be no more, and the arrogant will have gone. All who are alert to do evil will be cut off. Those whose mere word condemns a man, who ensnare his defender at the gate, and leave the just man with an empty claim. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of the house of Jacob, who redeemed Abraham. Now Jacob shall have nothing to be ashamed of, nor shall his face grow pale. When his children see the works of my hands in his midst, they shall keep my name holy. They shall reverence the Holy One of Jacob and be in awe of the God of Israel. Those who err in spirit shall acquire understanding, and those who find fault shall receive instruction. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Behold, our Lord shall come with power. He will enlighten the eyes of his servants. Alleluia, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord. They said to him, then he touched their eyes and said, let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, see that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread word of him throughout all the land. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you believe that I can do this? Do you, in other words, he's saying, do you believe in miracles? Do you believe that God can work miracles through a human being? Because remember, we know who Jesus is, right? Hearing this, we know who he is. Of course, we know Jesus has the ability to heal. But do you believe that God's desire is to heal through you? How many of y'all believe that? Not everybody. Okay. So, you know, so when they're looking at Jesus, keep this in mind of who they're looking at. They're looking at a man. They're looking at a dirt poor carpenter who happens to be a rabbi. And so when he says, do you believe I can do this? He's saying, do you believe a carpenter can do this? A carpenter, a layman can heal you of your blindness. And they said, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and he says, let it be done for you according to your faith. Faith. Thank God for the gift of faith. Faith releases miracles. Miracles really should be the norm in our lives. We shouldn't have to go to some healing conference or healing mass to see healings. Healings was normal in Jesus' life. In the early church, for the first three or four hundred years, all through the church fathers, you read this. Healing was the norm. They expected healings. That's how the Catholics lived. And we got away from that over the centuries. We became bigger and bigger and grew throughout the world and became more institutionalized. And we lost touch with the supernatural. We lost touch with who we are by virtue of our baptism. That God wants to continue his mission through us. This is why Jesus established the church. This is why Jesus was born. This is why he came into our world was to seek and to save the lost. And now that he has ascended to the Father, he continues his mission through us, through the church. And so he can say this about you. Do you believe you can do this? It's not going to be you that's going to be healing people. It's going to be me in you. And what does that mean to say that I believe? I mean, we profess our faith... When we say the creed, the demons believe in Christ. So what's the difference between a demon and me and you? Hopefully a lot. <laughs> to say I believe is more than just an intellectual sin. I can sit there and say I believe all day long till the cows come home. But to believe means I stake my life on this. I'll lay down my life for this. See, God believes in you. Do you know that? You ever heard that one before? God believes in you. He, look what he's entrusted to you. He's, in, he's given you his life. 
He's given you baptism, confirmation. He's equipped you with all the graces you'll ever need. He's going to give you his body and blood in just a few minutes. Why? He doesn't just give us his body and blood just to give you his body and blood. He gives it to you for nourishment and strength so you can continue his healing work, his healing mission. He, God believes in you. God believes that he can do miracles through you if you just have faith. And sometimes, as Catholics, we can be skeptical when it comes to the supernatural. We can become skeptical about anything that has to do with the miraculous. And I think the reason we are, because our focus is on ourselves. No, you're right. You can't do that. It won't be you doing it. It's going to be Jesus in you. We just have to have faith. We have to believe. And what does it, what does it mean to believe? It means... I trust in you. In other words, of saying I believe in you is another word for that is trust. I trust in you. I'll stake my whole life on this, Jesus. In other words, faith is willing to step out and take risk. Like I said, faith is more than just an intellectual assent to God's will or to some doctrine, right? That's, that is a type of faith. Right, But the faith Jesus is speaking out is the faith that it calls for us to step out. If you look it up in the catechism, the whole segment on faith, when it defines faith, it says faith is a human action. Faith is an action verb. <laughs> St. James says faith without works is dead, right? Sometimes we, we have dead parishes, dead communities, because maybe are we, are we living our faith more than just going to Mass? Am I walking the walk? Am I taking risk for God? And that's when you start seeing miracles, is wherever the Spirit is asking you to move today, whatever He's asking of you, am I willing to take some risk? Am I willing to pray with people? Am I willing to make a phone call to somebody I'd rather not talk to? Am I willing to reach out to somebody at work that I'd rather not reach out to? Am I willing to make myself vulnerable? Am I willing to look foolish before Christ? Look what Jesus did when he came. Look at the risk he took for us. Knowing that not everyone is going to accept him. That's why we killed him. Not everybody is going to accept Jesus. Not everybody is going to accept you because of who you represent. Are we willing to still live for Jesus and to take risks for him? And when we do that, that's when we're going to see miracles. That's where our eyes are going to be opened. Please stand. With great confidence and faith in God our Father, we turn to him with our prayers and needs. We pray for our church in this Advent season. This season of miracles, the season of hope. We pray that in this Advent season that for an increase in faith and a deeper surrender to God, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Lucas, and for all of our shepherds, for the courage and the strength and the wisdom and humility we need as shepherds, we pray to the Lord. For our world leaders and for their conversion, for the healing of our nation, that this nation might be restored to being one nation under God, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are suffering, we pray for the blind, the lame, the crippled, the deaf, those possessed by demons, all those who are suffering, that they might experience the healing power of God through us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died and those who grieve their loss, and especially the souls in purgatory who are in most need of God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions that each of you bring, to this Mass today, those intentions within the heart of Our Lady and for the repose of the soul of Mary Headley, for whom this Mass intention is being offered, we pray to the Lord. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of faith, the gift of our baptism. Lord, we do believe. Help us in our unbelief. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may, mer may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion ends upon, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. O Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and proclaim the good news. St. Michael. all the evil spirits crowd about the world seeking him to kill us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Saint Joseph, Saint Gerald, all you holy angels and saints, 